catch me hollering at the moon. When the most highly anticipated new roller coaster of the year opens, there's usually a very clear meta narrative for us in the theme park community to talk about. When Steel Vengeance opened in 2018, it was, is this the best roller coaster ever built? And when Iron Gwazi debuted in 2022, the narrative was very clearly, is this better than Steel Vengeance? So what do you do when there's a company like RMC that is consistently opening attractions that are, for the most part, pretty similar, yet also consistently rank among the best roller coasters in the world. It's hard to know exactly what to say other than this is another kick-ass roller coaster. And that's exactly what Airy Force One at Fun Spot Atlanta is. Another excellent entry into RMC's coaster catalog. But it's also a coaster that very much follows what I like to call the RMC formula. When Hershey Park announced RMC Wildcat this past November, I typed out the script for a video that I never ended up publishing about how the RMCs are starting to feel a bit repetitive. And that was the direction I was originally thinking of taking this video about Airy Force One. RMC fatigue is becoming a very real thing for me, and I think we're almost at the point where a discourse about how long they can keep this up is needed. But I realized that Airy Force One has a much more substantial narrative tied to it, as this attraction holds an importance to the amusement industry that's much greater than I think people are realizing. This is not just another run-of-the-mill RMC at one of the big chains. It's a partnership between two small families family-owned companies that seems to go against all conventional wisdom. Building a world-class roller coaster from the ground up at a tiny amusement park that prior to this had little to no notoriety is a completely unprecedented move in the amusement industry. And with that being said, I'd be remiss to go any further into this video without giving Fun Spot America its flowers. The Aries have been in the theme park business since 1979, and the opening of Airy Force One sure felt like the culmination of their journey as a small amusement park chain up to this point. Opening day of Airy Force One was my first visit to Fun Spot Atlanta, and I thought the park put its best foot forward. And if Airy Force One does well for the Fun Spot chain, it has the potential of being a transformative moment for the amusement industry, and could forever change how small amusement parks and family entertainment centers do business. We'll talk about all that and more, and as always, things will be timestamped so you can jump around. But first, consider helping me out by dropping a like and subscribing to the channel. Let's kick things off by talking about the ride itself. Airy Force One is just the second RMC iBox coaster to be built from the ground up, and the first with a full steel support structure. Since it's not a steel track conversion of an old wooden coaster, RMC pretty much had a blank slate when designing Airy Force One, which is evident in the ride having a more out and back inspired layout, rather than a twisted layout we're accustomed to seeing on most RMCs. You can really break down Airy Force One's ride experience into three separate parts. The first part of Airy Force One very much follows the RMC formula. And not in a bad way, it's just all elements we've seen and experienced on other RMC coasters before. The first part of this coaster is basically Goliath at Six Flags Great America with elements slightly rearranged. You have a typically great RMC drop with an 83 degree angle of descent, a dive loop, a bunny hill, and a sustained zero G stall. Then you go up into a Vengeance or Gwazi-esque outward banked hill over the top of the station. Again, all great elements, just nothing new here. But the second part is where Airy Force One really shines. Because the elements are all pretty unique and offer a ride experience we haven't seen before. You fly into a double up, which gives two great moments of ejector airtime, the second being the most sustained moment on the ride. From there you hit a zero G roll right over the park's arcade, go into a snappy turnaround, and straight into a barrel roll. This is such a great sequence of elements and paced so well. At this point of the ride, you're absolutely flying making the inversions very intense and the airtime extremely strong. It's truly some of the best work RMC has done to date. Unfortunately though, since the pacing is sustained so well, the third part of the ride is absolutely brutal. Now I understand I run the risk of sounding hypocritical, because it's been well documented that I do not like when RMC gets cute and throws stuff like this in at the end of their rides. And it really does not get more to the point than Airy Force 1's ending, which is essentially just six airtime hills 
almost straight into the brakes. But the profiling on these hills are just too aggressive. There's not enough room between them to create a sustained ejector moment. And instead, these mostly just throw your thighs and shins against the restraints in a rather unpleasant way. In my opinion, the ending would be better served with two or three larger camelbacks like the ones you see on Twisted Timbers. Because the insane pacing at the end of the ride warrants a more drawn out element. But despite these few minor flaws, Airy Force 1 is still a very strong showing from RMC, who continue to be one of the dominant players in the coaster space. Airy Force 1 was the 15th RMC I've been on, and I'd say it holds its own against some of the best. I would place it in the second tier of RMCs in the United States, behind Steel Vengeance and Iron Gwazi, but somewhere amongst rides like Lightning Rod, Outlaw Run, and Iron Rattler. And honestly, being in that second tier of RMCs still firmly places Airy Force 1 into the conversation as a top 10 steel coaster in the nation. But undoubtedly, the most impressive aspect of Airy Force 1 to me is the fact that it exists at a park like Fun Spot Atlanta. Building a roller coaster of this stature at a park as small and as unnoteworthy as Fun Spot Atlanta previously was is a move that fundamentally goes against both the conventional wisdom and common practices of building up a small amusement park into prominence. There was an interesting study done about a decade ago that evaluated the return on investment for different types of amusement attractions, and it found that it's typically more profitable for parks to invest in multiple smaller attractions rather than one big one, concluding that large roller coasters often don't provide a return on investment relative to their expensive price tag. And Airy Force One is certainly an expensive roller coaster. The ride itself costs $13 million, and with the need for additional infrastructure, the total price tag reached $18 million. Even if this was at one of the big regional chains, it'd still be no small drop in the bucket. Funspot is a privately owned company, and therefore its financials are not public. But I did find one estimate online that projected the chain's annual revenue to be around $36.9 million. And if that number is accurate, it would mean over half of a single year's revenue, which is the chain's income before any expenses, would be going into this single capital expenditure. That is insane. Needless to say, building Airy Force One was an incredibly bold and risky move. And if it doesn't lead to significantly higher attendance numbers for the park, it could set the entire chain back financially for years. But despite the incredibly high risk, I also think this was a pretty savvy move. I have family that live in the Atlanta area, and when I told them in 2021 that what looked like one of the best roller coasters in the world was on its way to Fun Spot Atlanta, they didn't even know this park existed. In this crowded digital age, it's so important for any business to cut through the noise and get noticed. And what better way to do that as a small amusement park than building an eye-catching, world-class roller coaster right off the highway? I mean, people were literally pulling over and getting out of their cars to see this thing in action. This is an attraction that firmly puts Fun Spot Atlanta on the map for thrill seekers, tourists, and most importantly, local Atlanteans. We're seeing something very similar at Coda Land in Austin, another small amusement park that's opening two different first of its kind in the country roller coasters in the coming years. While I can't say one way or another whether this bold strategy is going to work out for these parks, one thing I can say unequivocally is that every single FEC and small amusement park in the entire country has its eyes on Fun Spot Atlanta seeing how this is going to work out for them. And if Airy Force One does end up becoming a critical and financial success for Fun Spot, you will undoubtedly see other small amusement parks and family entertainment centers follow suit by building coasters and attractions of this magnitude. So again, congrats to the Aries, Fun Spot, and RMC on a job very well done with Aerie Force One. And make sure you get out to Atlanta to ride this thing, because I want a Giga T-Rex coaster at my local Scene 75.